So it's very difficult. OK. The last one I'm going to demonstrate is when I'm looking to hook the ball, and at the last minute I realize that the ball is too quick for me. Ooh. See? So I got in a bit of trouble. So now I've got to learn to bail out. I'm going to hook, and then I bail out by bringing my bat down, still keeping my eye on the ball. It's better to get hit on the shoulder than in the face or get out caught behind. Hook and down. That ball was too high, therefore I left it. Good leave. Going to hook, that's too low, keep my hands down. OK, again, there, and keep my hands down. OK, so those are the ways that you can leave the ball when the ball is too high and is too quick for you. There are other times, however, where you need to be able to leave the ball when the bowler bowls you a perfect delivery. So there are two ways I won't be able to do this with a ball. What I will do is try and explain to you how to leave the ball when it's pitching on a good length, moving off the seam, or swinging in the air. Pick my bat up. I'm usually forward. I see the ball in the last minute. It's too good for me. And I take the bat out of the way, bailing out here. Watch that. I'm there. Whoops. It's too good for me. So I take the bat out of the way. It's an immaculate line and length, so I've got to be careful. The next one is I'm actually playing the shot. It moves off the seam. And the last minute, I take my bat out of the way. This is called a curtain rail technique. Watch as I take the bat out of the way. So I'm actually leaving it here. So those are the ways that you can compete with the ball when it is too good for you to score runs off. Just seen Dave Richardson play his favourite cut shot. Now I'm going to break this shot down for you, but before I do, I want you to realise that it is a very dangerous shot. That if not played properly, you're going to get caught in the gully or caught in the slips. Okay, let's see how Dave plays it successfully. Firstly, pick your bat up nice and high to get on top of the ball. And remember the ball is a wide ball, that's why it's dangerous. Okay, then step across towards the ball, pointing your toe down to third man. This will keep you sideways on in order to hit the ball and allow your shoulders to turn to create the power. OK? Remember that. Point the foot down to third man. Right. From there, make sure you swing the bat parallel to the ground, extending the arms to the fullest in order to make contact and create the most power. That creates the power by having your arms extended. OK? Roll the wrists over and lean into the shot to keep the ball down. Remember, lean into it to keep the ball down. Some people, OK, look to cut up now in order to clear the slips and go down to third man. But for this particular shot, I want you to keep the ball down, keep your head over the ball, and make sure the ball goes for four behind gully. And it's a great shot if you get it right. Watch Gary Kirsten get above the ball, extend his arms, and play the square cut really well, getting the maximum benefit four runs. There's a distinct difference between the square cut that I've just demonstrated and the late cut. OK, the late cut is played to a field which is predominantly onside. But I'm going to hit the ball behind square because that is the only gap available to me. I'll play it to an off spinner who's bowling with a leg side field or to an in swing bowler if he bowls a little bit wide. Now, it's important in this shot to remember that I'm going to play the ball late. So I'm actually going to play the ball out of the wicket keeper's hands. Let's demonstrate. OK, pick the bat up. And I'm going to get low on this one because I have to make sure that I don't miss the ball. So I get down low. Again, my foot pointing down to third man. I get right down and let the ball come past me. And at the last minute, I just dab it out of the keeper's hands. OK, dab it out of the keeper's hands. And if I play it properly, get enough bat on it, it's going to go for four. It's a great shot, but again, it's very dangerous. The final shot in the series of cuts 
will be the square cut off the front foot. Now this is a very good shot played on a marvellous wicket when you're in good nick. Let's demonstrate. Okay, first of all, pick my bat up. And what I do now is I attack the ball, I go at it with my front foot, get my front foot across. It's a wide ball, it's a bad ball. Okay, turn the shoulder to get the power, extend the arms and cut the ball through on the offside. Again, watch that. I extend the arms, roll the wrists over it and I lean into it and it's sometimes called a square drive, but basically it's a square cut off the front foot. Remember, all cuts should only be played on a wicket with pace and true bounce. Played well, it's a thrilling shot. Played badly, as you can see, will lead to your dismissal. When building an innings, the cut shot should only be used as you become more confident. One of the more controversial shots today is the sweep shot. And with me to demonstrate the shot is Jonty Rhodes. Jonty, you enjoy playing the sweep, and why do you do it? You know, I just find that for a spin bowler to try and dominate me, he's got to bowl a very good line and length. And by using the sweep shot, I can actually upset his length. That's interesting. What about coming down the wicket? Isn't that an easier way to do it? You know, people get criticised for not coming down the wicket, but I find if the wicket is turning, and I stay in my crease, I'm not going to get stumped. And uh, by playing a defensive sweep shot, I can actually get one. I'm not trying to hit fours every ball. But just by getting down to the other end, I'm out of the danger area. OK, now let's demonstrate that shot. I'm going to use some fielders. I'm going to use two backward short legs, a wicket keeper, silly point, and silly mid-off, who will feed me the ball. OK, I'm going to start by getting Jonty to start in the finished position. That may sound Irish, but there we are. So that is the defensive sweep position at the end of the shot. OK, so let's see. I'm going to lob the ball underarm onto the bat so he gets used to hitting the ball to the backward short legs. OK. Now, at the second part of the shot, Jonty's now going to take his hands back as though he's ready to move into that position, and I'm going to ask him to get into the position as the ball is coming down. OK, Joe? And down. That's it. All right. And down again. That's it. Well done. And now the third part, I'm going to ask him to stand up, OK, and do the whole shot together. All right. And I lob the ball, and he gets into position and throws it and uh, gets it going down. OK, and again, and that's it. Good. Here, Jonty highlights the difference between the defensive and the conventional sweep. Getting his body in the same position, he swings his arms at full length, front pad in line and head forward. The intended result of this shot is four runs. A new innovation now, of course, is the reverse sweep. And we're going to ask John T why and how he plays that. Well, I think you can leave it out in the test match. Um, it's, it's a really effective shot in one-day cricket, especially when an off-spinner is bowling to you with a predominantly leg-side field and there's a big gap behind square on the offside. And yeah, I just used to use the, the reverse sweep to look at my runs in that area. That's interesting. OK, let's break that down again and see how we coach that. OK, guys, now we need two fielders on the offside here, a little bit deeper to catch the ball. Okay, we'll have one on the leg side there, just in case. Right. Again, I'm going to get Jonty into the right position. That's the end of the shot. And he's going to get there in front of his pad and the bat ready just to take the ball. Again, I should lob it, and he'll just flick it back down to those two slips. Again, that's it. Now, the difference here, okay, when Jonty wants to get in that shot, he's actually got to turn his hands over. Let's have a look. From here, instead of going that way and then trying to turn, he's going to actually go over the top and turn from there. OK? Right, let's watch that. Right, from the back lift, turns the hands over, and he flicks the ball down. Again, turns the hand over, and flicks the ball down. Now we get him to stand up. This is the hard part. Again, remember it's a full toss. He's going to run it down there for two runs. OK, and down. Well done. That's good. Again, he moves into position. That's it. That's the reverse sweep. The reason the right hand moves over the left in the reverse sweep is to ensure that the hands don't move away from the line of the ball. Play the shot with caution, 
And remember, it's played to change a spin bowler's line and length.